Hey, thank you for dropping by for my daily devotions. It is June the 21st, 2023. We're going to look at Revelation 19, Acts 28, last chapter back. We'll start Matthew again tomorrow, Psalm chapter 9, Amos chapter 6. And I was uh, we read the 18th chapter of uh, Revelation yesterday. And uh, verses 16 and the first part of verse 17 say this. This is talking about the great city Babylon, which represents world power, government power, corporate power, all those kind of things. And cry out, woe, woe, O great city, that's the city of Babylon, world power, dressed in fine linen, purple, scarlet, and glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls. In one hour, such great wealth has been brought to ruin. It can be destroyed quick. It can be destroyed. And at the day of the Lord, it will be destroyed quick. So don't trust that. Trust God who is bigger than worldly power. Let's take a minute and pray, and then we'll jump into the word. Father, thank you for speaking to us and being clear uh, so that we understand your will and uh, help us live it today. Help us surrender to Jesus as Lord and live your word and in, uh, in surrender to you. Speak to us. Apply what you say to our hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Revelation chapter 19. After this I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven, heaven singing. We ought to sing like this on earth, you know. It's what we're going to be doing in heaven. Hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belong to our God. For true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. And again they shouted, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The smoke of her goes up forever and ever. The 24 elders of the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who was seated on the throne. And they cried, Amen, Hallelujah. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, both small and great. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. Then the angel said to me, Right, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. At this I fell, fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, Do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Wor Jesus, worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider was called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and, his head, uh, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one, uh, but no one knows but himself, but he himself. He is dressed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. That's Jesus. Okay. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses, and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun who cried out in a loud voice to all the birds flying in midair, Come gather together for the great supper of God, so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, mighty men of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all people, free and slaves, small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against the rider of the horse and his army. But the beast was captured with him, the false prophet, who had performed the miraculous signs on his behalf. With these signs, he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshiped his image. Two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. The rest of them were killed with the sword that came out of the mouth of the rider of the horse, and all the birds gored them, gorged themselves on their flesh. In Acts chapter 28, last book of, last chapter of the book of Acts. Once safety on sh safely on shore, we found out that the island was called Malta. The islanders showed us unusual kindness. They built us a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. 
Paul gathered a pile, a pile of brushwood and as he put it on the fire, a, a viper driven out by the heat fastened itself on his hand. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, this man must be a murderer, but though he escaped the sea, justice has not allowed him to live. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. The people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time, they, seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and, he, that, and said that he was a god. There was an estate nearby that belonged to Publius, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us to his home and for three days entertained us hospitably. His father was sick in bed, suffering from fever and dysentery. Paul went in to see him and after praying, placed his hands on him and healed him. When this had happened, the rest of the sick on the island came and were cured. They honored us in many ways when they were ready to when we were ready to sail, they furnished us with supplies, the, the supplies we needed. After three months, we put out to sea in a ship that had wintered in the island. It was an Alexandrian ship with the figurehead of the twin gods Castor and Pollux. We put in at Syracuse and stayed there three days. From there, we set sail and arrived at Regium. The next day, the south wind came up and on the following day, we reached Puccioli. P Puccioli. There we found some brothers who invited us to spend a week with them. And so we came to Rome. The brothers there had heard that we were coming and they traveled as far as the form of Appius and the three taverns to meet us. At the sight of these men, Paul thanked God and was encouraged. When we got to Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself with a soldier to guard him. Three days later, we called together the leaders of the Jews. When they had assembled, Paul said to them, my brothers, although I have done nothing against our people or against the customs of our ancestors, I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. They examined me and wanted to release me because I was not guilty of any crime deserving death. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, not that I had any charge to bring against my own people. For this reason, I have asked to see you and talk with you. It is because of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. They replied, we have not received any letters from Judea concerning you and none of us, none of uh, the brothers who have come from there has reported or said anything bad about you. But we want to hear from you ab about your views for we know that people everywhere are talking against this sect. They arranged to meet Paul on a certain day and came in even larger numbers to the place where he was staying. From morning till evening, he explained and declared to them the kingdom of God and tried to convince them about Jesus from the law of Moses and the prophets. Some were convinced by what he said, but others would not believe. They disagreed among themselves and began to leave after Paul had made his final statement. The Holy Spirit spoke the truth to your fathers when he said through Isaiah the prophet, go to this people and say, you will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become callous. They hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. Therefore I want you to know that God's salvation has been sent to the Gentiles and they will listen. For two whole years, Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to see him boldly and without hindrance. He preached the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how the book of Acts ends. Started with the preaching of the gospel, ends with it. Psalm chapter nine. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. My enemies turn back, they stumble and perish before you. you for you have upheld my right and my cause. You have, set, uh, you have sat on your throne judging righteously. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You've blotted out their name forever and ever. Endless ruin has overtaken the enemy. You have uprooted their cities. Even the memory of them has perished. The Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He will judge the world in righteousness. He will govern the peoples with justice. The Lord is a refuge to the, for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name will trust in you. For you, O Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nations what he has done. For he who avenges blood remembers remembers. He does not ignore the cry of the afflicted. O Lord, see how my enemies persecute me. Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death. 
that I may declare your praises in the gates of the daughters, in the gates of the daughter of Zion, and there rejoice in your salvation. The nations have fallen into the pit they have dug. Their feet have, are, are caught in the net they have hidden. The Lord is known by his justice. The wicked are ensnared by the work of their hands. The wicked return to the grave, all the nations that forgot God. But the needy will not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the afflicted ever perish. Arise, O Lord, let not man triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, O Lord. Let the nations know that they are but men. And then look over at Amos chapter 6. Woe to you who are complacent in Zion and to you who feel secure on Mount Samaria. You, no, you're, you notable men of the foremost nation to whom the people of Israel come. Go to Kalna and look at it. Go from there to, the, to Great Hamath and then go down to Gath in Philistia. Are, are they better off than your two kingdoms in their land? Is their land larger than yours? You put off the evil day and bring near a reign of terror. You lie on beds inlaid with ivory and lounge on your couches. You dine on choice lambs and fattened calves. You strum away on your harps like David and, imp and improvise on musical instruments. You drink wine by the bowlful and use finest lotions, but you do not grieve over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, you will be among the first to go into exile. Your feasting and lounging will end. The sovereign Lord has sworn by himself, the Lord Almighty declares, I abhor the pride of Jacob and detest his fortress. I will deliver up the city and everything in it. If 10 men are left in one house, they too will die. And if a relative who is to burn the bodies comes to carry them off to the house and asks anyone still hiding there, is anyone with you? And he says, no, then he will say, hush. We must not mention the name of the Lord. For the Lord has given the command and he will smash the great house into pieces and the small house into bits. Do horses run on the rocky crags? Does one plow there with oxen? Have you, but you have turned justice into poison and the fruit of righteousness into bitterness. You who rejoice in the conquest of Lodibar and say, did we not take Karnaim by our own strength? For the Lord God Almighty declares, I will stir up a nation against you, O house of Israel, that will oppress you all the way from Lebo, Hamath, to the valley of Arabah. Now the Lord has spoken. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us today. Impact our lives with the truth we find in your word. Change us, God, from the inside out. Do it with the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you.